Never get out of my sight. Never get out of my sight. Stick with me, baby. I'm the fellow you came in with. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Luck be a lady. Luck with your bow. Paper and sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. <laughs> you see a guy reach for stars in the sky. You can bet that he's doing it for some guy. When you spot a John waiting out in the rain, chances are he's insane, as only a John can be for a Jane. When you meet a gent paying all kinds of rent for a flat that could flat the ties my heart. Call it sad, call it funny, but it's better than even money that the guy's only doing it for some dog. But this is why it's all too strange and strong. I'm full of foolish song and out my song must pour. So please forgive Days I knew I've really never been in love before. Yes, love song. Hi, everybody. Mike Isaacson, Artistic Director, Executive Producer of the Muni, and thank you for joining us for our last cast party reunion uh, special since COVID hit. Um, these have been just delightful and so grateful for everybody who's watched and sent lovely messages and questions. It has felt like our community is together again and that has meant everything. Um, also, you know, as I'm sure if you're watching, you saw our announcement on Monday. We have officially postponed our uh, 2020 season to 2021, which was the absolute right decision and completely painful for everybody. It's been interesting this week. All the emails and comments uh, have been really beautiful. And 
there is a communal sadness um, that the Muni will not be uh, here in St. Louis this summer, that uh, this this ritual of 102 years will be absent. Um, and the sadness is real. And we're really grateful for the kind words. And for so many of you who are, as we've asked, it means us a great deal. If it possible, you could donate your season tickets to help us through this crisis. Um, if not, we certainly understand, but we're grateful for those people who have already stepped forward and, and given us that support. Um, and so, yeah, what else do I have to cover? Oh, uh, it was great uh, earlier, just a couple hours ago, so many members of the Muni family and community were uh, on the Broadway, Broadway advocacy call, um, listening to that at this incredibly important and powerful moment. Uh, a shout out to our friend and, you know, Muni family member who's been out here a lot, many times, Cody Bernard Richard for his incredible work um, and their sharing and how they're helping everybody listen. Um, it's an incredible moment. So I just want to express my gratitude for that. But now let's get to the reason we're here, which is a reunion of uh, the cast of uh, the first show of the 2019 season, uh, Frank Lesser's Guys and Dolls which it will ever be forever be an important part in Muni history because it was the first show on our brand new James S. McDonald stage, the first to use automation, to first to use the new screens, and all of the people on the show tonight, I'm so grateful for because they just embraced it and took us there and created a really magical production for us. And let me make sure I uh, give all the credits to, to reminder, the scenic design was by Paul Tate Depew. Costumes were Tristan Rains. Lighting was Rob Denton. Sound, John Shivers, David Patridge. Video, Nathan Schauer. Wig design, Leah Lucas. Uh, orchestrations, Larry Blank. We'll get to that later, very important. And our production stage manager was the beloved Nancy Uffner, and the music direction was by the incredible Brad Hawk. It was directed by Gordon Greenberg, who will be joining us, along with choreography by Lauren Vitaro and Patrick O'Neill, who will be joining us. All right, so let's begin. The first one's in into the room. We're gonna bring in our Sky Masterson, Ben Davis, I believe Kendra Kassebaum, Ms. Adelaide is here, as well as Jordan Gelber, Nathan Detroit. Oh, oh, we got the hat. Yay. I have four hats, so. <laughs> Amazing. All right, we'll start. I can't tell you how good it is to see everybody. It's really good. Ben, you have you have like the uh, glow of the sun of Manhattan on you right there. It's very good. It is. It's coming in. It's actually it's, it's such yeah. a beautiful night. I had to do it outside. All right. So quickly, let's just go around. I'll start with Ben because you're my square to the right. Tell us where you are and how you are. Uh, I'm in New York, obviously down in Lower Manhattan, just south of the World Trade Center, uh, signing to the Freedom Tower, as you can see. Uh, I'm doing great. I mean, uh, I'm so I I don't know. If can I say what I was supposed to be doing this summer, Mike? No. Anyways, <laughs> I might have been back in St. Louis this summer, but uh, regrettably not. But I'm so happy to be here with these two uh, beautiful people and you, Mike. Mm. Jordan, how are you? And I love your hat. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you gave it to me, so I appreciate it. I wasn't sure if I should go with this or my pappies. I, I have all my favorite hats from St. Louis. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm here in I'm in Park Slope, Brooklyn. Uh, I'm uh, I've been here since the shutdown, so this is it's so great to see you guys. It's really nice. Great to you. And your family doing okay? Everyone good? Yes, everyone's good. Thank goodness. Great, great. And Kendra, you and I have talked a couple times. You still up in Seattle? Yes. How are you? We're doing okay. Yeah. Going in. Yeah. Okay. I've got my little guy, they're doing sprinklers in the yard. I mean, where's, you know, it's a little normalcy in the front yard right now. And All right. So let's take on some guys and dolls questions. Uh, so um, I'm trying to think. I mean, Ben, obviously you had been there a while. Jordan, I think that was the first time you'd been at the Muni at all or would just while I've been there at all? No, that's the first time. I, there was another, I was gonna come a previous time, but then I had to have that's foot right. surgery. That's um, but yeah. That was not your first time, was it? At the Muni? It's not. Is it me or Kendra? Kendra. Oh, me? Yeah. It, was, it was the first time. The first. Okay, so tell Jordan and Kendra, let's start with your inaugural Muni experience. What did you take away? 
Jordan, we'll start with you. Oh gosh, uh, I mean, uh, I, I had heard it. You know, I had heard rumors. It's like Broadway summer camp, and uh, <laughs> and, it, and it, it was. It's this. It's kind of this magical coming together over mm -hmm. these great, incredible musicals, uh, and uh, just the sense of family and camaraderie that yeah. you guys foster over there is incredible. And you treat the talent, the actors, like we're all big stars, and it's it's <laughs> make everyone feel good. Um, wow. it, it, it was great. I mean, and I, I love I love St. Louis. I had a great time out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Kendra. Yeah, the way, definitely, there was such a, a such a family vibe there that was just wonderful. The minute you stepped out of your dressing room, it was all hello, how you doing, you know, and it was just a good time. It was a good time just to celebrate with my people too. Well, your family. You want to share your family, mm -hmm. right, Kendra? Oh yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, my mom was mayor of the Muni, I think, in the <laughs> in the seats. <laughs> but no, it was a blast. And then we had the the World Cup and all that. And yeah, yeah, we're gonna get to that. We've got a little video to play. Uh, yeah. So Ben been part of the Muni family, several productions, but this was the first time with the new stage. You guys took it for the inaugural launch. And yeah. What was your experience with that? What did you think? It was just so much fun. I just saw Tim McDonald came on and said uh, that he's gonna. I, I mean, the whole the, the whole thing about the what my my memories <laughs> of it, my my the favorite thing about the Muni is the whole family aspect of it. And even with the new stage, that's what it was. It was like, okay, let's embrace this. Let's take this on. And it, it just didn't miss a beat. It was like everything was exciting and new. But it was the same, which was, uh, which is a credit to you and to Tim and, and to everybody else there that they just make it a seamless transition from old to new. Um, a little bit frightening, right? The way those things go down and up. There was that, I think that one of the first, the, the, the dress rehearsal the night before we had, there was like a, a brief, like where the trap was. We had to make sure people knew where it was and how quickly it moved up and down. Yeah, it's literally like a, it's not an orchestra trap. It's a death trap. Like that, that's, that's, there's, a, there's an element of, of like uh, life and death there, which, which raises is the raises the stakes a little bit. But uh, I just I'm so sad not to be there this summer and to see Tim on here and and everybody. It's just uh, what you guys have in St. Louis is so incredibly special. And I feel so blessed to uh, so blessed is such a cliche thing. But I feel no, very really blessed to be a part of it. It's the truth. It really that, is. That is burned in my memory as such a gift was that opening night because we had spent five years talking to the community about this new stage and what it was going to be and what we hoped it could do. And, you know, it's hard to visualize that kind of thing. You know, you can say the words and people are like, well, oh, okay, you know. And then when you heard that, then, ah, da, 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 da. And that thing tracked out brilliantly to the music and stuff. And those, and Denton's lights began to hit. You get out the whole audience go, oh, right, okay, okay, we, yeah, we, wow, all right, we get what this is. It was amazing that two and a half hours as they saw the new lighting and everything. Yes. That's uh, well, that's kind of what I felt like in the rehearsal room <laughs> the first day because the talent is extraordinary and it's go. And you go, oh, right, okay. I'll play catch up. I gotta, I gotta get on this train. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you guys were also, and we're we'll, we're gonna talk to Gordon a little later. But you were also in that that world of this was a you know a classic of a classic musical with a capital C, right? Mm -hmm. so it's that amazing challenge, and I always have to tell people it's it's an incredibly hard change it challenge to make it not old, to right. make it in, in in performance and intention and everything we're doing to not feel like a museum piece. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, so you're dealing with comedy, you're dealing with a whole thing of another world and you're finding it there. And I just wanna hear about like how all three of you worked on your parts. Jordan, start with you. Uh, I mean, for me, I mean, it was uh, just trusting the text. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I mean, this was interesting with, with, with this process was, I, had a, I, mean, I don't know about you guys, but I try to get everything under my belt as much as I could because we had limited rehearsal. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, it kind of, not worrying about what I was supposed to say, I got to really enjoy kind of riding the wave of, I mean, as for, for Nathan, Nathan and Adelaide, or Nathan, Nathan stuff in general is 
it's just so it's so tight and it's so well written and it's so and it's efficient. You just have to trust what, what he wrote. And Gordon was there to guide us. And mm -hmm. it was rehearsal was pretty pretty fun. And I never really worried too much in rehearsal. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah, <laughs> it was a total playground. Gordon made it a playground too. I see him here. Right. And even though yeah. it moved really fast, we were still able to play. We just played very quickly. It was like move on. Did that work? No. Nope. Let's go. <laughs> <You know? laughs> But it was fun. It was a very supportive and um, safe place to play. And yeah. And we should all acknowledge we were so proud of you. You won the St. Louis Theater Critics Award for your performance. It's my first award. Yeah. So well deserved. Really well deserved. Right. Right. That that's, so that's the thing to me. It's like Gordon had done this before on the West End, obviously. So he had a he had a, an idea of what he wanted. But then when you get in a, in a room or on a wing, as we were, uh, with, with people like Jordan and Kendra who are so brave and so uh, just willing to go there and say, okay, that didn't work. Let's come back to, to something else. Um, it, it was so inspiring. And that's what that, the, the, the environment that Gordon set up. And I think it was all through the casting. And, you know, I lobbied for this role because this was something that I'd wanted to play for a while. Good for you. And, uh, yeah, and and so to be in a room with you guys though, and to have Gordon there to know that he would edit where it need be, uh, yeah, was very liberating. Oh my gosh, yeah. it's like the A game, you know. I was I was really honored as well. It, so, and I, Kendra, honestly, you you marvel. I was I marveled at you every single time because uh -huh. I would just I would stand off stage and just watch what you did, and it was so brave and so. Uh, if I was saying it's the material is really tight, you just say it pretty much. I always found it like <laughs> Now, Jordan, I have to tell you, you may want to respond to this. Anne Harada has posted the following. Jordan Great. stole all of his bits from me and Steve Rose. <laughs> <laughs> it's 100% true. It's 100% true. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love her. Hi, oh, man. Man. It's, a <laughs> it's I steal everything from Ann and Steve. It's it's absolutely true. I don't do anything of my own. I steal from the best. That's no. exactly I, I, right. Don't we all? Now, <laughs> Jordan, you got to help me out with this one because I was trying to find it. So as I think most viewers know, that Guys and Dolls was playing the night that the St. Louis Blues won the Stanley Cup. And it happened right... Remember, there was a rain delay because we kind of... Yeah. We kind of... This whole thing and all got clustered and oh, it was crazy but but it happened when you came out in the phone booth right at the end of <laughs> of, of, of um yeah Sarah's song <laughs> i came running around this corner like to tell you and you looked at me and you're like i got this <laughs> you stepped in the phone booth and do you remember what was your ad lib i well i had to wait for i mean it was it was literally right when they had won, I think, and everyone had got their alerts on their cell phones. And, and so I finished her song and walked off like, well, they like my song. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I'm like waiting in the phone booth, and I, and I said, uh, either everybody loves Sarah or the St. Louis Jazz is just one of the family cup. Blues, jazz, yeah. Good, blues. It was great. No, it was, it was, a, and I was like trying to dig out my cell phone because it's like, oh, he's going to do it. And I didn't take it. So thank you for that. Um, I think there was like five ad libs from different people that night about, about winning the Stanley Cup. Oh my gosh. And there, yeah, you did one. There, I kept begging that it wouldn't happen on my watch because that's <laughs> what I did. Yeah. I think Jordan was the perfect person for it to happen to because Jordan is that, he's got that kind of presence and everything that can, can totally handle it. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. All right, we're going to watch a little video together. Joe, uh, let's take a little bit of I'll Know. I think we've got that's the first video. I'll know long before we can speak. I'll know in my heart. I'll know and I won't ever ask. Am I right? Am I wise? Am I smart? But I'll stop and I'll stare at that face in the throng. Yes, I'll know when my love comes along. When my love comes along. Uh, 
I yeah. really attacked her, didn't her. Mooch. Yeah, totally attacked her face. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the incredibly Brittany Badford who could not be with us when uh, we sent out. So extraordinary. Amazing, amazing performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so, I, you know, there is something about the Muni stage, the full orchestra, the classic songs. I mean, what is that as an artist? Uh, it's not just the stage, it's not just the orchestra, it's the environs, it's the hearing the crickets in the background, it's the feeling the presence of, you know, 11,000, 12,000 people or whatever it is at that time. It, Wait, Ben, uh, you, you get crickets on your lines, Ben? <laughs> you know what? Mine was not the comedic role, okay? <laughs> but it, it's it's that sound of everything. It's just like this this overall energy that uh, it's just singular. I honestly I can't even. What is this? My sixth show, I think, of the Muni. I think so. But uh, it 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 never loses its charm or its awe or or anything like that. It's just. Um, it's an incredibly spectacular. The way the audience is is wrapped in attention. I mean that that's it's just all that's right there. shocking to me is how yeah. intimate, weirdly intimate, you feel as an actor. I did. I felt, and I, I felt like the energy focus from the audience is just like shoo. Yeah. So that was shocking to me. Right. You I know. I think we have a video of uh, you and Jordan in action. Do we have a little bit of Sue Me? Oh, I've never seen anything like that. So sue me, sue me. What can you do? I love you. You gamble it here, you gamble it there, you gamble on everything, all except me, and I'm sick of you keeping me up in the air till you're back in the money again. When I think of the time gone, Adelaide, by, Adelaide. and I think of the way. I could honestly die. Serve a paper and sue me, sue me. What can you do me? I love you. Give a holler and hate me, hate me. Go ahead, hate me. When I you, you wind up in jail, don't come to me to bail oh, you. Right. That's the first time I saw that. Oh my God. Sensational. Gosh, do you remember? Well, I always messed up. It was like, which line to cross you over? I always remember. And you just look like, we're not there. Sue me. You can always say sue me if you missed the lineup. What I so oh. treasured about what you two created with those two characters is they were hilarious, uh, idiosyncratic, and exactly what you want. And we truly believe you two loved each other. Oh my gosh. I think it's like one of the best love stories. That's the real <laughs> stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, it, it is, it really is. If you look at the text and everything, they're just so endearing and so real deal, you know? So is Sky and Sarah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, y'all had something special though. Both of you guys just brought such heart and such sincerity to such comedic roles. It was just so much fun to watch. Well, and plus, we're both parents, and it was kind of like a, a camp. Like, we were really excited to be playing, too. <laughs> I'm sure, well, you missed your family, too. And I, I my son was with me, but still, it's kind well, of I can always there. take a couple weeks away. I'm, I'm fine with you taking know, a week or two away. <laughs> you're swimming in your pool. You know. Don't worry, this won't be anywhere where they can, your children can download it. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, Jerry Vogel, who was in the cast, has written, the whole cast was in the wings every night for Sue Me. Brilliant every time. Oh, oh that's so nice. That was, yeah. There yeah. Was a lot, we all supported each other in those Jerry. rooms. I loved that. Yeah. It was a really great cast. It was just yeah, a really, really supportive and fantastic cast. cast. Cool. Yeah. All right. You three are amazing. I need to bid you goodbye and welcome oh, in. Bye. Bye. I love you guys. Thank love you. you. Miss Kendra, I hope you're well out there. Miss you. Miss you. Oh, my God, yes. Me, miss you. Be good Good enough to you. All right. Be safe. Bye. See you soon. Bye. All right. So now we're going to welcome in the show's director, Gordon Greenberg, and the co-choreographers, Patrick O'Neill, and Lauren Lataro. Yay! Hi, guys. 
Happiness indeed. All right, let's go around the horn. Uh, Gordon, where are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm uh, uh, north of New York in Pound Ridge in the country, um, uh, hunkered down, writing and hiking and um, trying to stay inspired and calling you for pep talks. <laughs> <laughs> we have had a few of those, haven't we? Yes. Patrick. I'm in the city. I camped out. I'm um, in Jackson Heights, Queens with my hubby and my puppy. And uh, we, uh, we're just, we're really well. I mean, considering everything going on, we're just trying to keep spirits high and um, thank God for this and Zoom and FaceTime and all the stuff that kind of keeps us connected through this crazy yeah. time. Did I see something you're celebrating an anniversary? Did that was we just We just did, yeah, we did on Wednesday. Congratulations. That's Congratulations, great. Patrick. You put yeah. up with me for three years. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lauren, how are you? Good, we're good. So amazing. You're at home with the kids. Everyone's safe? Yeah, I have a little two year old, and we're right on Washington Square Park. So we're, you know, handing out water and here daily, seeing the, I mean, it just hasn't stopped. It's like the whole world is coming to visit. <laughs> so, <laughs> protest. It's very exciting. All right. So we should tell the story, actually. What was great was uh, I'd always wanted to work with you, Lauren. And, um, Gordon said, I want to work, you, you two had just worked on a show out in San Diego. What was it? It was the Huey Lewis musical, right? Yeah, yeah. Heart of Rock and Roll. And 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 after Gordon, he was like, we're, we're hiring her, we're working with her. I'm like, great. So we had this conversation and then you couldn't come to the auditions and your Patrick was your associate yeah. and you said Patrick and I'm watching this guy in the room and I'm like, wow, well, he's ready. Wow, this is something, you know, we put it there. And then you very fortunately called like two weeks later and said, you know, you've been working on an off-Broadway show, the dates moved, blah, blah, blah. And you were like, well, is there any way we could sit or like, I was like, Patrick, yeah, great, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys had this amazing collaboration, the three of you, in creating this. So that's what I wanna talk about. Also, as Ben mentioned, Gordon, you had done Guys and Dolls in the West End. This, you know, so you sort of based our production on that or what you've learned there, but tell us how you brought that and, and all three of you made this amazing production. Well, I would say this is a show I've lived with for a very long time, for the last decade, really. I directed the tour um, that was kind of the remnants of the production that Lauren was in um, on Broadway with Lauren Graham that the Dodgers produced and then Big League sent out. Um, and, you know, I don't know if this is common knowledge, but they literally took me up to a warehouse in upstate New York and said, here's the set, what do you want? Um, because a lot of it was video. Um, and so we had to kind of refashion a set and um, it got me deeply involved in the lesser estate and talking to uh, Joe. And since I'm such um, a, a big fan of that era and of Frank Lester to begin with, I, I fell in love deeply um, with the show and we did this uh, tour with Steve Rosen, who has ended up being one of my best friends um, and my co-writer. Uh, he played Nathan in that production. Uh, and since then, um, I uh, ended up directing it at Chichester, which is sort of a Williamstown-y place. Um, it's a combination of Williamstown, Lincoln Center, and Goodspeed, um, two hours outside of, of London. Uh, and then that production transferred to the Savoy in London and it ran for uh, six months and then it transferred from there to the Phoenix um, and then Rebel Wilson came in and then there was a tour and it just, it was the gift that kept giving. Um, and I, I, because I got to know what was under the hood, what was uh, the beating heart of the show, um, I felt like once we got into this uh, sort of um, rehearsal process at the Muni, I was able to tell people surgically, here's where the treasure is. Here's where all the good, human, gooey, uh, beautiful stuff is. Um, and it, it, the, what they were saying is absolutely spot on. Nathan and Adelaide is a perfect romantic couple because their conflict comes from wanting the same thing, just on different terms. Um, and it's a familiar situation to a lot of us, but they keep going like this because he says, I love you and I want to be with you like this. And she says, no, I love you, but I want to be with you like that. Um, and they clash. Uh, but they clash because they love each other so much and that's a great reason to clash. And then Sarah and, and Skye, 
who are at the center of the show um, really do love each other as well. And, and they just have to kind of shed their armors and protective mechanisms and preconceived notions and get past that to truly open their hearts to each other. Um, and it's, it's ingeniously constructed, uh, but because it was written in 1950, um, it's much longer than musicals are now. <laughs> the scenes are long, um, the numbers are long. These two had Herculean tasks uh, in, in choreographing an opening that could have gone on for 10 minutes um, and Havana and crap shooters. Um, and so it's really about figuring out how to truncate and make the most of all of this, uh, all this material and make it feel like it's constantly moving forward. Sorry, I, I, I could just keep talking about it. If you wind me up, I, I do love the show. <laughs> 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 All right, tell us about your collaboration, Lauren and Patrick, and how you created this job. Well, Lauren and I, it's funny, Lauren and I um, have worked together a few times. I danced for Lauren off-Broadway uh, like 10 years ago now. and um, Five, it was like yesterday, it was. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Um, and then we, I, I was very lucky that these two brought me to San Diego as well. So I, I got a chance just before we collaborated in St. Louis to work together in, um, Patrick, on the West Coast. the associate choreographer of the Huey Lewis show. Um, so I, the, reason, the reason it worked so well for me is because I spoke both of their languages already. So I, I, in a way, it felt like I was the new kid on the block, but um, I kind of was hiding in the corner, just kind of taking notes for the last nine months. And so um, when the opportunity came around, Lauren and I um, worked kind of like we always did. Like we got together in a room and decided the story that we wanted to tell for St. Louis. And um, she she was is unbelievably generous and supportive, and held my hand through the whole thing. And uh, my favorite picture of the whole thing is is Lauren Gordon and I during our sweat tech under umbrellas with big hats on, <laughs> sitting out in the theater. Um, that's the that's my favorite memory that I think I've taken from. That's a great thing about both of you, and and the reason why you can collaborate so seamlessly. Um, together and with me and with and Lauren collaborates with everyone. Patrick collaborates with everyone because they're both yes and people. Um, like the the basic tenet of of comedy and and acting and really all creation is saying yes and adding plusing, um, and that's what they do always. So it's it's a joy. I yeah. I just want to add that Patrick is being a little bit um, generous, and the truth is, Patrick. Um, what I remember is the best memory is the numbers that Patrick did by himself that I wasn't even around for. So the opening number and um, um, uh, don't. Uh, Sit down um, in the boat. Oh, Sit down in the boat. Sorry. Don't ruin <laughs> my boat. I knew the choreography. I, knew the choreography. <laughs> <laughs> I have had a full glass of wine. Yes, I had a girl, I had a girl. But, um, uh, Patrick did those without any assistance from me or any help from me. And I happen to think that those were the two best numbers of the evening. So um, my best memory of the show is actually, I have two. One is us, the two of us in that tiny room group growing together, like with yes. you know, dancers in a room, like just like yes. working on crap shooters and stuff. And what we did was like, Lauren and Patrick did this together. Lauren did this alone. Patrick did this alone. And that's sort of how we divvied it up. And it was it was really fun. But I, I feel like it, my, I am very happy that, um, I, I feel like uh, Patrick is ready, was ready, and showed off that he is a choreographer. So that was my, um, my summer loving. And Thank I you. think we have a clip of Havana to show, Joe? Is that what we have? Let's see what we got. He lined up here.
Um, I mean, when you have Calvin Cooper and Alicia Lundgren dancing front and center, how do you go wrong? How do you go wrong? <laughs> they were amazing. Amazing. How do you go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> let's not forget, you guys had to do two 10 minute ballets that told the story and were thrilling physically. Um, in a very you don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> I will say along those lines, we could not have done it without our associate with Niji Bali and um, our assistant Brian Hunt because there were so many things that needed to happen in so many places. They were the um, they were holding up the walls of uh, that's, of our. That's the reason our those sort of miracles are possible at the Muni's because the support staff is so good. The Brian Hunt, the Michael Baxter's, um, and uh, etc. Uh, but there are so many amazing people that help facilitate and take your ideas and make them material. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. Heaven. Um, I will say, before we start, we were supposed to be joined in our group by Ken Page, who's been having um, internet problems. He's shown up in the other group. I'm like, Ken, if you can get over to the private chat, get over here, our beloved Ken Page. So hopefully we will pull him in. Oh, wait, there he is. Yeah, there he is. I finally got back online. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's been a whole fabulous drama. Hi, Ken. I missed you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Joe, do we have that picture of Ken and Brittany backstage on one of the cold nights that was floating around? There we go. Oh, <laughs> I love that picture. Yes. <laughs> that was. I have to say that was another amazing relationship that blossomed obviously off stage and on stage between the two of them. Um, and we found so much just when, you know, you thought you knew the full uh, contours of the show and the characters. Um, there was a lot of beautiful connection uh, between the two of them as granddaughter and grandfather. Yeah, it was really lovely. We have a clip later of Ken uh, singing more. I cannot wish you, I believe, yes, we do. Um, I, I remember that because there was this weird cold snap that hit like right when we started performances. And Brittany was hilarious because it had been her first time at the Muni. She doesn't do that many musicals. So it was sort of this fascinating world for her and she was totally into it. Yeah, Brittany's fancy Juilliard. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then that night, the cold, I was like, oh, you should stand over there. We've got blankets for you. And she's like, really? <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, we're gonna carry them. Just go sit there. We have blankets. And then Ken's like, here, get over here. <laughs> I'm a human blanket. We That's handle it all here at the Beauty. Um, it is so great to see the three of you. Thank you. There is a moment I, I, met, I talked about at the beginning of the show and our Muni photographer, I think it was Bill Hamer, I'm not sure, one of her photographers caught that moment on opening night when the boom got three quarters the stage was filled with your glorious dancers. It is, they, we, you, we've used it on some brochures and stuff, but it literally is the moment that Muni's history's changed. Aww. And I'll always be grateful to the three of you for being a part of that, of uh, taking us into this new exciting era. So I just wanted to say that before we departed. Very grateful. Well, thank you for having us. It's an honor. Yes. Thank you. So now I Love think- Love you guys. We're going to hear Ken Page with a little more I Cannot Wish You. We're going to bring in the next troupe. Music, I can wish you merry music while you're young. And wisdom when your hair has turned to gray. But more I cannot wish you than to wish you'd find your love, your own true love. This day. With, a With a sheep's eye and a licorice tooth and the strong arms to carry you. Are you kidding me? Hi, guys. Hey. Hey. Everybody, well, your names are there, so I'll introduce you. Save me the work. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, let's start. I'll start with you, Orville. Tell us, where are you and how are you? 
I am fantastic. I'm in New York City trying not to eat everything in my house because <laughs> <laughs> with this thing, so Gordon, Gordon, uh, Jordan Gelber and I have been texting each other these bread recipes because all of a sudden we've become bakers. And so it's like, oh, how do you know, how do you do the no need? And then like I graduated to needed bread and stuff like that. Anyway, eating everything and loving it. And yeah, great yeah. thing all of you guys. Hi, Kevin. Hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Hi. good. I'm in Texas with my mom where I've been since early March and we're doing well considering. I mean, we're getting through and, um, you know, I'm so happy I'm here with her and um, I, I'm you know, we're doing fine. That's yeah. fantastic. Hi, Jared. Hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, I'm in Los Angeles, in Burbank, and um, doing okay. We, um, we're we staying safe and healthy. I'm working, teaching a lot from my home, so that's keeping me busy and, um, and keeping the lights on. And uh, we're spending a lot of time. I have a five-year-old son, so it helps a lot because you spend the whole day making sure he's okay, and so you can't sort of spiral into the dark places. <laughs> Yeah. yeah I get it. Hi, Zoe. Hi. How are you, babe? I'm good. I'm hanging out in the loo and uh, getting a lot of decluttering done. <laughs> a lot. So this may reveal a little too much, but you know how you have those things, like you walk by them and you go, someday I'm going to do that. I'm going to clean that door. I'm going to read that book. I'm going to do that thing. So this thing hit and I've done none of it. <laughs> and you feel extra guilty and the self-esteem is even lower. Like I can't yeah. even get it together to clean a drawer. Like what's happening? <laughs> oh wait, this isn't my therapy. This is it. Okay, got it. <laughs> All right, yeah. let's talk about Guys and Dolls. Um, let's start with the title song. Mm -hmm. and oh my God. You two mastering that. Let's talk about that. Oh, I mean, I don't think we, Jared and I, had ever really officially worked together. No, we've known each other forever. Yeah, we were big fans of each other before, and now, like you know, we're joined at the hip. <laughs> but um, so little known fact, like mu real life at the Muni, I was great vocally throughout the whole rehearsal process, mm -hmm. and when it came uh, time toward opening, lost my voice completely. So um. I went to the doctor, hooked me up by like the second or third performance, I was okay. But like, because I have no ego, <laughs> I said, Jared, that last note on, I only do it myself, no. like, why don't you take that and I'll take the lower one. No, 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 but like, Jared was so gracious. He was like, of course I'll do it, anything for you. And so, yes, that was the little- Also, I love a high note. Real note. Something else. <laughs> <laughs> That was the hardest number I've ever had to learn, I think, in my whole career. And I don't know why, but Orville and I would just, we, we, I remember being in the studio trying to learn it. There's so much, every single word was choreographed. That number was right. completely, every moment was staged. And then the words are, it, every verse is the same, but a little bit different. So you have to keep remembering which verse you're on. And for some reason, yeah. it, it tortured me. And every night we would do it and have so much fun. And then it would end and I'd be like, Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's scary. It's like it's like a Sondheim song. You're like it's a list of yeah. things that are a little different, you know. And then you just you just have to get the list uh, straight in your head, and you know. It drops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one of the things I noticed is like one of the joys of what I get to do is like you you know you're doing seven shows in a row, and they're shows I've loved. I've never produced otherwise. So you sort of get under the hood. You begin to see how they work, right? And what was so amazing to me about that song was it was like the musical idea and the lift that the audience needed right at that moment and the show needed. Like it's that thing, like, you know, sometimes when you're watching a show and it's just sort of here and you go, okay, we're staying here. But then with great musicals, it, it sort of lifts at moments when you don't expect it. And that to me was just the joy of Guys and Dolls. And I was so fascinated by that song every night because you felt the audience's Energy go to it, thing, and they adored the two of you. Let's be. Let's oh, yes, that. they did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Who does? <died? laughs> <laughs> well, you know that song, isn't it? Um, traditionally, it's it's what we call an in one song. Like usually, like that number can be done completely in front of the curtain while they're changing the set to do something else. 
but you know, now with theater technology, you don't really need in one songs anymore because they can just flip the set. So like now you have to really dig into the song and figure out what it means. And, and you know, the brilliance of it, of course, it always fit in the show and it, it's always been brilliant, but um, it just, it really now, you know, you, 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 you uh, really have to laser focus. What, what is the song? What is this song about? And that was, it was just so wonderful, you know, getting to do that with uh, Jared every night. It's such a great, it's such a great moment to let these two guys in the show have their moment on stage alone to do this thing too. That's what makes Guys and Dolls more special than almost any other musical is that you have your four leads, obviously that you're following throughout, but then the whole show is peppered with fully realized, hilarious, interesting, colorful characters. And so everybody gets their moments to, to you know, make a meal and to, and to enjoy what they do and to say hi to the audience. And it's really, it's really special. Kevin, you've done some amazing work in many shows at the Muni. And what struck me about your work in Guys and Dolls was your character was sort of this specific color that had to deliver these, con no, you, you had these specific common notes that were all in relationship to everybody out. So you were like this odd man out, but right when it needed, like you had to slide in. It was like fantastic. Uh, well, thank you. You remember, I don't know if you remember this, but I sent you an email asking you if I could be in the show. Do you remember this? <laughs> I was like, I love the Muni so much. I've done two shows there. Can you? Is there anything I can do? I'll uh, let me know. So I'm always grateful to you. But um, Wait a minute, we're gonna tell the whole story. We were okay. struggling with casting that part, and I, you know, Gordon and I were like, "Well, let's give it a thing." He sends me this email. I'm like, "Why didn't we think of Kevin?" And I, you know, Gordon, like, what do you mean? Like, brilliant, do it. And then I go back, to Kevin Cahoon, make the offer, and he the email. So the, the offer went out like 20 minutes later. And I get this email from him, he's like, whoa. I was like, whoa. I mean, seek and you shall find. Like, <laughs> yeah. And Gordon and I had been friends for years because he used to sell, he used to bartend at the Winter Garden and I sold merch at the Winter Garden. So we've been pals for 20 years. So, you know, I was really, really grateful that he, uh, you guys cast me in. But it's interesting you were saying that about Harry the Horse because Gordon told me in rehearsal, let's create someone that no one likes to be around. There's something <laughs> about him. He's so obnoxious. <laughs> and so maybe that's the color you were picking up. But um, Brendan, <laughs> Brendan, who played Big Julie, was so brilliant and you know such a pro that it was really a thrill. It was a thrill. And speaking of casting stories, though, <laughs> so, <laughs> another actor had started rehearsal in your part, and that actor suddenly had to had a film and suddenly had to go, and you were in this thing. And I literally called you, and I go, "What are you doing?" And you're like, "Making stew." And I said, yeah, turn it off and get down. <laughs> And you're like, okay. Well, it was so funny because you actually said, what are you doing tomorrow? Okay. And I was supposed to start rehearsal for Kinky Boots the next day. And so then I got all paranoid. Am I not starting tomorrow? Do I not have the job? Do I have the wrong day? But, I, and I was actually hard boiling eggs. That's it. And I said, let me change my shirt. I'll come out there. And I did. And, um. Uh, you know. Side contracts met the cast <laughs> it was actually probably the scariest moment because didn't they just have their designer run that morning? It was pretty late. It was like six or seven days in. Yeah. And then at lunch and then you yeah. said, here's your new, <laughs> everybody was a little flabbergasted. No one had any idea, but everyone was so wonderful. But but I had four hours of a uh, wig fitting, costume fitting, music rehearsal, choreography. It was a wonderful day. I got home and got out of my car and said, somebody is cooking something really stinky in this neighborhood. And I walked into my house and it was the hard boiled eggs I had left on for four <laughs> Floated all over the kitchen. Oh no! Yeah. I have to do a shout out to our beloved Sue Greenberg, who 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 heard that story and what did she do though? I came in the next day and there was a brand new pot for me. 
When somebody comes into a cast last minute, you always feel like you have to try to take care of them and make sure they're okay. And we barely had to do that with Zoe because she made us feel safe. You came in and we were like, oh, thank God. She's great. We'll be fine. I mean, you were such a pro right from the minute. Oh, my gosh. You guys were all very wonderful. I I was very nervous about, you know. Well, the, uh, the other thing, it also gave you for a piece of Muni history. Because in um, our last equity contract negotiations, we went round and round on last minute uh, actor replacement and stuffers, which when you have 10,000 programs is really, really hard. (laughs) So we were going back and I said, look it, you know, can we put a pause on this? Because I think in two years, we're gonna have these screens and we'll be able to do, is this scene, where is this? Ah, There we go, up on the screen every night. There we go, ADA, we deliver right there. There there you have it, can't hide anything on those screens. And I think I just got some good news. I think we are figured out and I think Ken Page is gonna join the party. Yay! Woo! I think so. Yay! (laughs) You did it! Did I, you see me? (laughs) Oh my God, I really did do it, I'm so glad. I ran in and then my internet service was off. Oh. And then I kept pushing buttons and pulling things and plugging and unplugging things and came back on. It had been off since the afternoon. Oh, no. Oh, no. Welcome. So you can see You're me. That's, I can't see you right now, but that's okay. We can see yeah. you. Were you able to see the marvelous clip of you singing your song? Were you on? At that I was point? not. I did not get in then, no. Well, we showed but it. That's okay. Fabulous. Well, then. <laughs> I mean, talk about pressure. How am I doing? So you, <laughs> I'm on, how am I doing? <laughs> talk about pressure though. So I'm doing Nicely Nicely Johnson on stage with the man who originated the role in the Broadway revival. So there was, I'm like, oh my uh, goodness. You're wonderful. Oh, I love you, Ken. Thank you so much. Oh, I love you back. It was a little stinging because when they said, and now brother Nicely Nicely Johnson, I almost got up. <laughs> <laughs> You should have. Sit down, sit down, you're you're rocking the boat. (laughs) (laughs) But for all the uh, fans out there who might be watching, if you've never heard that recording, and it's hard to find, but that recording of that production of Guys and Dolls with Ken on it is crazy off the hook magical. Find it, find it, find it. It It's pretty good, I gotta say. I'm so glad we got to do it. It was very iffy if we were going to get to record a cast album, because right at that time, things were a little stiff about the changes and the things and the this and the that. And Motown Records came through and said, we will do it. Mm. And uh, everybody said, rejoice, rejoice, because at least we knew the history would be recorded, that it would actually be there. And um, while it is hard to find, a lot of people have it. And I think it's it's on online on Amazon. You can still find it on CD, which is amazing to me. Amazing, um, Ken. We didn't get a chance. We've talked with everybody. How are you? Just update everybody. How are you doing? Where are you? Tell everybody who's watching. I'm good. I'm good. Up and down. You know, riding the waves, pulling the wagon, all the things. I'm here in St. Louis, where I live, as you all know. And um, you know, things are good. I mean, ain't nothing happening. <laughs> we all know that. Uh, but I have some writing things that I'm working on and um, some things that have been thrown out there for like 2021. God only knows what will be going on by then. Yeah. But it gives you hope, you know, yeah. uh, not only the Muni, by the way, but some other things, which is really great. Um, but basically just hanging in here, you know, I mean, not to bring anybody down, but I lost my stepdad a couple of weeks ago. So we all know that's how that can be. But, uh, you know, with the joys of Netflix and a few other things, I've made it through. And here I am. So glad I was able to get in. I'm telling you, you should see me racing over over the streets to get home to do this. Do you have any particular memory of, of Guys and Dolls? Uh, at the Muni? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, you know what? The whole thing, honest to God, was a memory for me because I sat there often thinking of, you know, when I had done it. And I've done it, I think, twice since then. I did it at the Hollywood Bowl. And um, I did a production of it up at Sacramento, up at Music Circus a few years back. So I was sitting there thinking, and and those, of course, I did nicely still. But 
um, I was thinking, wow, what a full circle moment. I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm in Guys and Dolls, a show, needless to say, beloved to me, as you said, it was my Broadway debut. And here I've graduated from Nicely to Arvide, a role I love, by the way. Very, very happy. What a gorgeous song to sing. Mm -hmm. And I was very lucky in our production, a wonderful man named Emmett Babe Wallace, who had been in the film of Stormy Weather. He was the romantic lead in Stormy Weather, had played our Arvide. And he was the loveliest, loveliest gentleman. And when I did it, I thought of him and I dedicated it to him. And I thought, well, Babe, as we call him, I've graduated to your role. How about them apples? You know, because I was 21 <laughs> when I did show on Broadway. Wow. But it was a lovely, lovely, uh, there were nights, especially working with my dear sweetheart, and I can't remember her name right now, forgive me, who Brittany. played Sarah. Tell me her Brittany. name. Brittany. Brittany, thank you, thank you. Uh, she was unbelievable. She gave me everything you could have wanted to have in a scene partner. I mean, she was absolutely there, and I absolutely felt that what I was saying was real, not only maybe because of my acting abilities, <laughs> but because of what she was giving me and that sense of, yes, I want to go out in the world, but I don't want to leave you. It was absolutely radiating to me from her. And she really gave me so much. And there were a couple of nights at the end when I really almost lost it because she was when she grabbed me, I you know was standing behind her and she grabbed my uh, uh, hands and she held on so tight that I thought, oh my God, Goodness, and it just brought this beauty. And I think the audience could feel it. I could, you know. Yeah. She was wonderful, really wonderful. Was she with you guys tonight? No, she wasn't with the moving. She wasn't able to join us. So, uh, yeah. 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 Well, she was wonderful, really, really wonderful. Yeah, we did show. Well, actually, we should pull that picture back up so Ken gets to see the picture of, of he and Brittany backstage. Can we pull that You back? know what? I can only see me. That's just oh, the way I got hooked up. Right. So. Scratch that. Sorry, Joe. Oh, is that the picture of us under the blanket? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we were having the cold wave at the Muni, which was like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> and she had the blanket. And I was standing there. She said, come on. Come on, grandfather. And I thought, grandfather, <laughs> Jesus Christ. But then I went over and we got under the blanket. It was so sweet. I'm glad there's a picture. I don't think I have that. You have to send it to me. Well, I think... One of the things that a show like Guys and Dolls requires when you're doing the classic thing, sort of what we were mm. talking about earlier, is you never succeed with them, or my, my belief is they're, not, they're never successful unless you get a sense that the company, the cast, is approaching it with joy. Oh, absolutely. The thing well, about the minute you hear, I'm sorry. You have to celebrate them as you do them. And that's absolutely. what gives such meaning, and you all, were so amazing at that. It just radiated the sense of, and we're doing guys and dolls. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll tell you, if I may pass something along that Abe Burroughs, that's how old I am. <laughs> Abe Burroughs said to us when we were rehearsing, he sort of was our supervisor on the production. And he said, you know what I gotta tell you guys, guys and dolls, which we all laughed, you know. He says, you gotta believe in these people. You've got to believe in them and you got they have to be real for you so you can really access them. And I think the cast of the production last summer did that very thing. I mean, these are the things I was sitting back watching and looking at and thinking, you know, wow. And Gordon did such a great job of making that happen. And everybody else, of course, brought their wonderfulness to it. But making those people come to life, you know, I thought that was what was one of the things was one of the things was so great about Kendra. I mean, you really believed Adelaide. It wasn't just a caricature of somebody of a something and a something. You you knew that woman, you know. But I think everybody was like that. Very yeah. committed. Well, I'm also grateful to you. It is time. We have hit the hour. This is just it just made my heart so full just seeing all of you and having this conversation. Um, two things I'm telling everybody who's watching. So the news will be announced tomorrow, but beginning next Monday, we're going to do a 10 week online season at the Muni uh, every Monday night. And next Monday, I guess it's gonna be announced tomorrow, but I'm just gonna announce it now. <laughs> we have an unbelievable, uh, we captured on video Beth Level when she was here at the Sheldon. And it is an hour of magic. And that will begin Monday, day 15. You'll see all this tomorrow. 
and we're going to do five Monday nights, so every Monday with a, a single repeat broadcast on Thursdays. And then beginning on July 20th for five Mondays, we're going to do just wait and see. But it's, it's going to be exciting. We're working on some amazing things because we not, may not be in the park, but we want to we wanna have something for our community and we want to celebrate our community. So there's That's that. That's great. Um, and then as we're going off, as everybody will remember that this production happened with the St. Louis Blues winning the Stanley Cup. So we're going to exit uh, with running that little video that is now part of history, not only Muni history, but it actually made it to, I got calls the next day. Did you know you're on NHL.com? <laughs> What's that? There's like 10 million billion people on NHL.com. You've made it. So good on. That's cool. Anyway, adore you. I'm so happy you're safe and healthy soon. And to everybody who's been watching and joining us, we're so grateful. Hi, Nancy Uffner. She just popped up. Nancy <laughs> Uffner. We're very grateful. Everyone be safe. And let's go out with Gloria. Woo. Love you all. <laughs> <laughs>